Hey guys, welcome to Lovely Creative again today. In the news, we have a report of the New World Disorder from Iraq, Ukraine's lands, gases, conflict, Syria, Libya, China, Venezuela, and other nations participating in what we now hold as a new form of disorder within the order of our globe. It might not be 1914, but in definite terms of world discrepancies and new international moldings on policies, politics, and diplomacy, the eminent impact of war, conflicts, and global disputes has made it incessantly reliable to worry about how, when, and where all these products of today's issues may come back with their byproducts to deal with. This summer has been spiked up by territorial, tribunal, religious, ideological, never-ending political interests, failing diplomacies, and resolutions with timers to their names that has allowed the world's attention to steadhead towards the Middle East, Africa, Eastern Europe and Russia, Venezuela, China and its ocean autocratic claims of lists that go on eminently to the adding purpose of what we used to find normal in our world's constitution. Trying to find a justified judgment in the new world disorder becomes relevantly critical if at least we tend to care not for only the losses and slowing down of our production and welfare today, but really signify the probability of disaster from all this chaos going on around us today, which perhaps has not affected your home directly yet, but in no sense of scaring anyone at this moment could eminently do so at another. There have been losses of lives in numerous and unaccounted forms, perhaps even unfelt manners, which, parallel to them, seem to mark a necessary loss in the eyes of our new world order, disorder, acceptance, to comply with obtaining peace, for example, Gaza, no real intervention, yes, in our modern iPhone, internet, super speedy, happy delivery service world, we stood, aided, and observed how governance led diplomacy within the taking of months passing to detain and redistribute powers back to the original source of the problem, which left a toll of thousands of displaced, dead, and unremembered many. The new disorder has an asymmetrical pattern, which will reach us significantly even if we ignore finding resolutions for these as they cool themselves, let alone. In Iraq, minorities have been ambushed to ordain a growing fear of their own lands, men, and aid has been formalized to arm the men we considered threats before. In the relation of the new antagonist towards the old, the only difference is that the new antagonists have actually formed a caliphate, and we used to also aid them when they were fighting the northern borders for independence and had the distinct name of al qaeda Interesting enough, this carbonized copy of Help Get Hit is what makes diplomacy the furthest, far fastest, and farthest aid for the short-term losses which seem to be accepted rather than activating full engagement of force, which, in our pagan industry of conflict and war, tends to not procrastinate on hating and having fines of future vendettas application, even treason sometimes, like 9-11, soon to be celebrated in our country. Iraq and Syria are losing government, people, resources, economic participation, influence, trust, wealth, Yet, ironically, they have never been so strongly united by an ideal which claims to impose extremists throughout their ideology and lands, being the ISIS group, and by the people of the Jihad, which was a subrogate division of Al-Qaeda. The irony of bad revolutions simplifies the, sm the simile found in a virus behavior of sickness expansions in a weak body. The issue at hand is breaking down the state within the nations. For example, in Libya, the state apparently has never existed, and for those who think it has, they can't remember what it was like to be in it. Tribunal disputes with no constraints on changing pools follow interests to obtain immediate satisfaction through power that relies of a country that is so hurt from within that it's having no source of leverages on economic values to work things out in their range mostly has relied on relief by killing themselves. And just like in Gaza, Iraq, and the ongoing list of religious interventions, we can't intervene much because of the cultural consequences ruling there. 
This is the New World Disorder's symptoms. With the absent aval of state formations within the nation, governance has no rule or platform to develop. However, because of failed attempts in the now revolting Iraq, Gaza, and even somewhat esporadically volatile ex-Afghanistan, implementing international intervention has ceased to push for states in these nations. Due to the fact that once they are formed, it seems that the underlying senses of religious culturization inclines them to overshadow common interests that got them towards power and turns out to develop close-minded autocracies which implode the nations formed temporarily, bringing greater fuel to the fire which had before set a somewhat ease through diplomacy. The second type of disorder comes from states that implicitly and voluntarily want disorder for economic and political reasons. Russia, for example, breaching international powers of equity to push through leveraging economic treaties, boundaries, and before accorded agreements, changes that threw the whole pot into a frenzy, throw them out of it as well, and call upon tensions to empower them momentarily on new measures dictating future policies and actions of balances within the world's leads. After World War II, the world changed from engaging at massive force strikes towards an incentive of making rules to prevent these from happening. But now, it's not about making rules anymore. It's about the breakage of these in a strategical form and how long, slow, and critically negative are the positions to adapt in coping with the reformation or translation of these outdated clauses. In Latin America, the education deficit strikes up concerns. Chile, Mexico, and Brazil invest a greater than normal amount of their GDP on education, yet they still can't surpass the mean results of other OECD nations, the Organization for Developing Nations in Cooperative Developments. Whereas the amount of funding for education has done very little to truly impact the quality of its sources. As a consequence, that are related with laboral disparity, study time, and the malnutrition of tuition rates have all either remained constant to before investments or diminished significantly in quality towards the correlation of increase on improved budget. Chile, for example, has elevated its amount of accomplished secondary level graduates in high school. 57% of the adults in the country have received formal secondary education completion by a registered institution. However, within the nation's conforming of the economic CO cooperation and development organizations, the fall under all 18% below average is significant, whereas the average rate for other members is well between 75 and 79 percent. This country has been investing 6.9 percent of its sources from GDP directly to change no, not only these rates, but to improve reach and quality of the essential structure of its educational system, representing a percentual point higher than its counterparts of neighboring nations. On another inference, at inequality's hand, 84% of university graduates in Chile hold a job position, whereas 59% of high school find employment difficult to encounter. Finding their greatest stretch on vertical development to be the fact that superior education slopes give a 160% higher marginal rate of salaries as well. If this was none other than the case, irregular, which is not in our despair world of globalized balances, Professors are underpaid in contrast, averaging to the OECD nation's mean by 40% less. Brazil invests 19% in education out of GDP's net expenditures clauses, overtopping the 13% mark from comparative nations in the region. Mexican does the same carbon copy implementation of investment growth of education with lesser results in an effective spending of too much resources of a non-optimal efficiency, whereas the highest celebrated inconsistency of their overall budgeted no gains at real change have them leading the polls for kids working more time than picking up books to study. 
In the United Kingdoms, we have that the referendum has been negatively seen by leaders of this nation, which are trying to find diplomatic reasoning in the Scotland territory. Cameron says that the referendum is not just a chance to give the effing Tories a kick. Prime Minister mixes impassioned defense of UK with tough warning that independent Scotland can run out of money. He then warned of the dangers of Salmon Sterling's sensation Plan B, in which Scotland would use the pound even without the agreement of the UK. Cameron said that Scotland would face the same fate as Panama, which uses the dollar. Financial institutions would move very rapidly from Scotland into other parts of the UK. Panama found that because you are not responsible for your currency, you can run out of it. So the short answer to Scotland being separated from the UK and using someone else's currency is that your financial institutions could leave and you could run out of money. The threat of financial instability was reinforced by the warnings from BP and Standard Life. Bob Dudley, the BP Schiff executive, said, As a major investor in Scotland, now and into the future, BP believes that the future prospects for the North Sea are best served maintaining the existing capacity and integrity of the United Kingdom. This has been Loudly Creative. We hope you enjoyed this informational report on the news development analysis. We will be here with more news tomorrow. Join, subscribe, 